Hello, this is New Vision TV. I'm Lynn Komjisha. In his New Year's message, President Museveni warned Ugandans to guard against diseases of affluence that are now killing more people than diseases of poverty that used to cause more deaths when he took power 32 years ago. Now, Makere University medical professors have thrown their academic weight behind the president and bluntly explained to the people how their newly acquired eating habits are sending them to early graves. By the time you finish drinking your 20th bottle of soda in a week or less, you have in effect chewed a kilogram of sugar and become a good candidate for diabetes. And if cooking oil is often used to prepare your food, a similar fate awaits you. If you use both of them, you can as well start paying your diabetic specialist as the inevitable moment approaches. You can, of course, engage in extremely vigorous physical exercise to reduce the risks of all that sugar getting converted into fat. But the surest way to avoid sickness from such consumption is to eat right. It is advisable to eat fruits and vegetables instead of taking soda and using oil for cooking. First of all, they have fructose, they don't have glucose. But they also have fiber, they have minerals, they have vitamins. I would encourage you to eat as much fruits as you can. In fact, you should eat uh, you know, fruits at breakfast, fruits at lunchtime, fruits. They are so healthy. Instead of taking sugar. Ibingira, who is also a doctor, has urged government to provide facilities for screening for non-communicable diseases to the lowest level to enable early diagnosis and treatment, saying in most cases, people come to hospital when they are beyond a saving. The major non-communicable diseases in Uganda are diabetes, cancer, respiratory and cardiovascular diseases. Encouraging early screening, early detection, and probably early treatment. But we are aware the health system doesn't have those facilities. And that is one of our drives to bring this to the attention of government that there should be all these facilities up to the lowest level of a health unit so that people can, wherever they are, they can access screening facilities and know how they are as far as non-communicable diseases and other diseases are concerned so that they can seek for early treatment because these days people come, come to hospital when they are already dead. According to Ibingera, the prevalence of non-communicable diseases are becoming progressively a concern in the young age group because of the changing lifestyle. So the, the issue of uh, uh, these days we see uh, non-communicable diseases becoming more and more prevalent even in the young group, particularly cancer, diabetes, even hypertension. Uh, this is because of the changing lifestyle. Uh, children, the way they are fed, the way they are cared for, uh, children are increasingly being given a high carbohydrate diet. They are increasingly being given um, foods that predispose them to these non-communicable diseases, especially high carbohydrate, high sugary foods. Now, these carbohydrates and high sugary foods uh, when they reach our bodies, they are metabolized and because we cannot, these children cannot use the, high, the, 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 the glucose generated, they end up storing most of this glucose as fat and part of the fat also goes into the blood vessels and therefore you find the children are obese for their age. The expert encourages people to enrich their diets with fruits which contain natural sugar and fiber and also eat lots of vegetables. The non-communicable diseases are caused by bad habits such as smoking, alcohol and physical inactivity. And there are chronic diseases mainly caused by life, lifestyle factors 
such as smoking, uh, alcohol use, unhealthy diet, and physical inactivity. That's what they are. The main four NCDs are cardiovascular disease or heart disease, uh, cancers, diabetes, and chronic respiratory diseases such as asthma and COPD. The best way to prevent these NCDs is to deal with the four major risk factors. Reduce alcohol, uh, increase physical activity, eat fruits and vegetables, and, and stop smoking. Makerere School of Health and Sciences will host an international conference on non-communicable diseases in February. This report was compiled by Kennedy Oriema for New Vision TV. Now, Mulago National Referral Hospital continues to register more road accidents which hyped during the festive season. During last year's Christmas and New Year festive period, over 100 accident cases were registered at the emergency and accident ward of the country's biggest health facility. Farida Namsisi, in her early 30s, a mobile money operator at Mulago on Monday morning, a commuter taxi lost control and veered off the road, ramming into her and a colleague who died in the hospital. On her sick bed in the casualty ward, she narrates how she only remembers giving instructions to the deceased on how to use the money she had given her to operate a mobile money business located at the nursing school. The officer in charge of Malago Police Station, Joshua Kananura, identified the deceased as Ruth Nakanjako, aged 25. Kananura said the taxi, registration number UAT, 462W was coming from Cherando to the city center when it lost control and knocked the victims. He said it also hit two other cars parked on the roadside. The driver is on the run, according to Kananura, as the manhunt for him continues. Moving on, Franco Olaboro, the Bundibujo Chief Administrative Officer, while speaking to the New Vision, said in this financial year, 2018-2019, one of the key project areas they have put priority on is the renovation of Bundibujo District Hospital because it is an old hospital. Olaboro disclosed that the project is to spend 300 million shillings and is to be finished within three months. The project involves the renovation of the maternity ward and the theater. Other activities will include electrical installation, plumbing system, and repainting the ceiling and the walls of the hospital. You're still watching New Vision TV, and now for a Pearl of Africa series, we'll take a look at Lake Chaninga. Lake Chaninga is found in Fort Porto in the western part of Uganda. It has a meandering shape with shores guarded by a rainforest that adds shading to the beauty of the waters. It is not only blessed with blue waters, but also is a habitat for birds and monkeys. Take a look. This is Lake Chaninga, located in Fort Porto Town. This lake was formed about 10,000 years ago as a result of intense geological and volcanic activity that shaped the dramatic scenery of the region. It is about 220 meters deep. Through the bushes are tiny footpaths that lead to this incredible, beautiful lake. Lake Chaninga is blessed with so many amazing things, starting with the blue water, great landscape animals to mention but a few. The crested cranes are one of the commonest bird species here. They enjoy this place in their peaceful nature. The lodges here, which are called Chaninga lodges, provide good accommodation. The water is also bilhazia free and therefore safe for swimming. For more Pile of Africa stories, visit our website www.newvision.co.ug. Our newspaper, The Sunday Vision, is also another home of adventures, so get your copy every Sunday for Pile of Africa stories. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of your updates on your mobile, on your desktop. 
On your tablet, anywhere on the go, by visiting www.newvision.co.ug. I'm Lynn Komjisha.